Hey everyone and welcome to the 30th video in this Material UI React series. Now it's been quite a journey and if you've gotten this far you probably have a pretty good idea of how to use most of the components, how to style things, um, how to use React Router with Material UI and pretty much do a bunch of cool stuff. And um, you probably don't really need any more tutorials on components because you've seen enough um, to get the general idea of how the documentation works. So in this video what I really want to do is I want to help you guys find inspiration from your applications. I want to help you guys find uh, different react different websites that are built using Material UI um, and, and sort of give you an idea of what's out there, what the potential is on what you can build and how to sort of look for these type of things. Um, so let's jump right in. And before I do, actually, I just want to say if you enjoy this video, please consider liking, leaving a comment or subscribing. I read every single comment um, and I love interacting with you guys. I love reading all your suggestions. Um, and honestly, it's just been a really uh, fun journey with you guys, and I can't wait to start putting out more videos, whether it be on Material UI or other things, and uh, still having you guys around. So thank you a lot for all the support that you've given me thus far. So I'm here on the basic Material UI documentation. As you can see, this is just the regular link. Um, and if you scroll down, you'll see a couple of different things. You'll see installation, usage, you know, the premium themes, which we sort of covered in another video. Um, but we'll take one more look at it. And then at the bottom, we can see here, there's a little section called Who's Using Material UI. If you click on Who's Using Material UI, you'll see that it takes you to a spectrum.chat link. And in here, you can see a bunch of people that have joined the community and um, you know, just left themselves a little post uh, that they are indeed using Material UI. And this is actually probably pretty good for backlinks on an SEO side note. Um, uh, you can see here that um, people that are leaving their link here sort of get a backlink to their website, which is probably a bit of an incentive um, for them to do that. But if you scroll down, you can see that a lot of people um, have been using Material UI for their websites. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom so we get the most recent people that have been using Material UI. And you can see here, what you could do is you could just click and open up a couple of them. Um, you'll notice that some of them are actually down, for example. I think uh, this one is no longer this one no longer exists, um, stuff like that. But you can go in and for example, you can see some of these cool sites. So I'm not really sure what this one uh, covers, but if you, another good way to know if it's actually use, still using Material UI or not, um, if you can't just tell by the components is uh, going to inspect element, just clicking on, for example, some of the text, and you should see all the class names like MUI typography root and stuff like that. Um, and that's a good indicator that obviously these components are Material UI. Um, and you can see here, um, the buttons and stuff like that look cool. They have some effects that, for example, you don't just get in the basic Material UI kit. So you can always just go ahead, inspect, you know, whatever component you like from another site and sort of see what they're, what they've got going on in their CSS, the transitions, for example, when you hover over and stuff like that, how, um, they added that to their site, how they make it. Um, and it's a good way to sort of not exactly copy or steal or anything like that, but get inspiration, um, and use small small little bits and pieces from different sites into your own application. And there are some examples, like for example over here, if you open this uh, drawer, you can see that if you've watched the drawer tutorial, it opens up and the whole um, rest of the page sort of goes dark, and it's very similar to the basic Material UI um, opening, uh, the, the very basic Material UI drawer uh, component itself. You can tell they didn't do too much modifications to it or anything like that. You can see here that this, they've got pretty much just a black background and then they have a gray paper sitting on top of it. Um, and also, this is a great exercise if you're trying to learn material, material UI. Just going to different websites that use Material UI, seeing how they've sort of done the layout and how they have sort of put things together. Um, so then if we go to the next one, so this one might be a bit harder to uh, notice. There's not too much going on on this page. You can see here when you click get started, um, it sort of has the same on-click effect as regular buttons in Material UI does. You'll see here that um, this is pretty much basically dialog, the dialog component that we covered, uh, which opens up and blacks everything out. This is just, uh, this is, um, you can use anything 
so there are a lot of different like Facebook Messenger chatbots. You just embed the JS um, onto your site, and that's how you get that there. So that's not material UI or anything like that. But once again, if you click Inspect Element, you can go ahead. Uh, you can see here they're using, for example, um, MUI root. Now, something you might notice is this sort of JSS 137. Um, and when you look at the styles, you'll see here like there's just these random JSS and then numbers that are adding all these styles. And pretty much what happens is when you bundle React up in production, um, so for example, if instead of running, usually when you deploy a React web application, you don't want to deploy like a node container and run npm run start because that will run the development version of your site. You want to do something like npm run build and then um, you take the bundle file that is built from there and then you can statically host it from your front end, whether it's on like an S3 bucket, um, whether you do AWS Amplify, which by the way, I plan on covering in future videos on React and stuff like that. Um, but um, what it will happen is Material UI will bundle all the styles into these sort of um, uh, uh, anonymous sort of like class names over here. Um, and that's sort of what's happening here. And it'll assign all of them a random number so you don't get any clashings uh, on the style names or anything like that. And yeah, um, depend. you might run into, there are some issues, like for example, if you're planning on packaging components and then reusing them in an application that also uses Material UI, you might get into a bit of problems with that, but that's a bit more complex and I doubt, um, I doubt that's a very common use case. Um, but yeah, also we have, for example, another site like this. So you can see here, um, you can't, it's sort of hard to tell what is Material UI here, but if you inspect element, whoops, if you inspect element once again, you can see that these guys are all cards. Um, so you can see, uh, for example, you can see that this is all wrapped around in an MUI card. Um, and then you have the card root um, and stuff like that. So it's sort of cool to see how other people are using their components. You can obviously tell, so for example, when I hover over this button, you can tell that the button is just a regular button. It's not uh, contained or, or anything like that. And also they have little tool tips coming up. So I find that pretty cool. Um, and uh, you can see here when I go to type, if I were to type in like an address, um, it doesn't look like it's using the MUI Labs autocomplete or anything like that. Looks pretty standard. You can tell this icon they sort of custom added in because that's not any of Material UI's um, custom icons. And then one other site that I found that is currently using it is um, this site over here, runitback.gg. So for example, this one has a lot, uh, is a lot more um, built off of Material UI. You can see that they're using the grid system here. So they have one big grid and then they have three columns on their site, each split up into a grid item, as you can see here. Um, and you know, if you were to go into every single one of them, so for example, if we go into the middle grid, you can see here that they have a bunch of different things uh, going on here to do with Material UI, for example. Um, this corresponds with this. Then we have, uh, if we open this up, we can see every single one of these things is a grid item. And the way they structured it is they wanted the latest, I guess, news article to be sort of um, take up the entire width of the grid. Whereas down here, they only wanted it, um, every other article that's not the latest one, to only take up, uh, you know, maybe um, half of the grid. So you can see here, they must have applied some, just some very basic logic based on indexing that when it's the f latest item, it um, the grid is a size 12, and if not, all the other ones are a size six. So these are the sort of cool little niche things you can pick up on by looking at um, other websites, uh, code and stuff like that. Um, and you can also do things like Google like projects using material UI. I haven't had as much success um, with uh, third party websites. So for example, uh, if I use websites using material UI, you'll probably get a link to built with. Yeah, so like for example, built with is like a popular website that can tell you or what they specialize in is telling you what a website's technology is built out of. <clears throat> I looked at most of these sites and not a lot of them are actually still using Material UI um, and stuff like that. But um, you can also, and on the Material UI documentation, which is another cool thing that you can do, whoops, uh, material, uh, sites using Material UI, you can see they will have um, example projects that you can look at. So for example, <laughs> React Most Wanted, um, let's see if they have the demo up anywhere. Um, it doesn't look like they have the demo. Oh, here we go. 
So they have a demo here where you can like see it and you'll notice like it doesn't, you know, maybe the cards down here and stuff like that look like basic Mintel UI um, when you look at it like that. But, you know, a lot of this cool stuff, like the header sort of like fading out the more you like scroll up and like, you know, this cool background image with this stuff on top. This button doesn't really look like a standard Mintel UI button. These sort of things um, that really show you what is possible and how much you can really stretch a Mintel UI component, I feel like um, is really inspirational. At least when I build sites, I look at sites like this and I'm like, wow, I didn't know you could make a button like that, like that with Mintel UI. I didn't know you could have this sort of like scroll um, animation. I don't really like how this is. I feel like when you get to the bottom of the scroll, this should also be like white with maybe a border or something. I don't like how it's like sort of dark gray, um, but it just shows you like all the cool things you can do with it. So there's another way uh, to get some inspiration going just to the example projects over here. Also, they have a little showcase. Um, where some people will make different sites through Mattel UI and post like, you know, um, post it over here and stuff like that. So like this one I think is really cool. Um, <laughs> they have a little cursor thing where that thing like follows your cursor. That's more of like animations and CSS and stuff like that, less to do with Mattel UI and stuff. But you can see how clean they've sort of made the card layout here. So for example, like this sort of feels like even Netflixy, right? Um, the way this is. I really don't like this cursor thing now that I'm actually using this site. Um, but yeah, like uh, when you look at the documentation, you don't really get a sense that you can use the cards in such a cool way. Here's a good example of carousel. I know a lot of people are looking for carousel with cards, um, so you can inspect and see how they've done the carousel. In fact, the code for this is probably even public. Um, yeah, if you click the little GitHub link here, you can see how they did the carousel for Mintel UI and stuff like that. So that's all really cool. Another thing I want to talk about, where did I put that? The themes and stuff like that. So I've touched about on this on in another video, but really quickly, these are sort of cool. Um, this is pretty much what happened was a bunch of people came together or different people and they created different like pages using Material UI and some of the themes are free and some of the themes are slash templates are paid. So for example, you can see a lot of these are paid and if you were to purchase one of these, all that would happen is you would pretty much just get, um, uh, I guess, uh, a zip file that contained all the different components and, and stuff like that. And this is really, sorry if you can hear my cat in the background by the way, but this is really a good way if you have, um, <clears throat> if you're building something that is very close to one of these things, like if you're building a dashboard and you're like, oh man, I'm going to literally need like one of these graph components. I'm going to need one of these like, you know, bar charts components and stuff like that. Then it might be worth the money with, um, you know, how much you can pay for it. And you'll see here, they have things like a sketch sources and Figma sources and stuff like that. Now, what that is, and that's another thing I wanted to touch upon. Where did I put that? Here, um, uh, I'll just search it up in here. So Mintel UI also has a lot of design resources. So another um, thing you could do is if you followed w one of my first videos um, with Mintel UI, what I did was I downloaded Figma, I think, which is just a UX creation tool. Um, and you can download a media pack for Figma itself. And this will have all the Mintel UI components uh, there. So you can sort of design UXs using Sketch, Figma, or Framer, whatever, um, you know, if if you're not too familiar with UX, they're not too hard to get a basic understanding of. But if you are, um, whatever your favorite UX tool is, uh, they don't have XD, Adobe XD, I think yet. Um, but pretty much you could download the UI kits and make a site like that. Design it first, and then um, I find when you design a site, you sort of uh, partition it in your mind as well. So it makes it a lot easier to code once you have a UX to build off of versus just freehanding um, type of thing. Um, so they also have a lot, a lot, a lot of different design resources that you can use. They have IDE tools, um, which is pretty much just MUI snippets. Um, so I made my own Matil UI snippets and maybe that's something else I can do a video on. Uh, maybe next week I might do a video on the snippets I made for Matil UI, but they also have some um, very basic snippets for VS Code as well. Um, and a lot of just cool things that you can use to um, uh, pretty much uh, make the design process a lot faster. They have, there's, I think, another library called Notice Stack, which, if you haven't watched my snack bar videos, it's just an easier way to implement snack bars, I think, um, so you don't have to open, uh, deal with the open and close state. If you're interested in doing that, I have a video um, where I explain exactly how to do all of that and stuff like that. But um, here we go. Here's the carousel from Matil UI and stuff like that. But essentially, um, there are so much things. The Matil UI, um, 
documentation owners and pretty much the people that made me tell you I really have put a lot of work into their documentation and a lot of thought into all the different things that people would want. So I highly recommend just taking the time to go through um, it, now that you've sort of gone through the whole playlist and you have a good understanding of Material UI, really taking the time to go through all the things that they have left, looking at other sites that have used Material UI, and really just getting those juices flowing for that next web application that you're going to build for a client, or the next project you're going to work on, or the next you know startup you're going to work on. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if I might make a couple more videos from Until UI, but if I don't, thank you so much uh, for all your support during this series, and I can't wait to jump into the React series as well. Um, so stay tuned because I got a lot more coming, and I hope you're all staying safe, and if you found value in this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe, or uh, comment on the video. And thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next